So in a previous video, we installed all the tools necessary to run our Rust programs. Make sure to check out that video first before you go on with this. Or if you have things already installed, well, let's now talk about Cargo, which is a package management tool in Rust. It allows you to install crates or modules to your system so you can use various predefined or pre-built functions. It also helps you manage your project, clean build, and even test your programs. Let's use Cargo to create a brand new project First, I'm going to type in ls. What we'll be doing is we already created a Hello World program in the last video, but this time we're gonna be creating it using Cargo. And I'll show you how quick that is. First, let's create a new directory. I'm gonna do mkdir. I'm gonna type in Rust here as my new directory name. That's where I'll keep my Rust programs in. ls, I have it right here. I'll change directories, so cd into Rust. Let me clear things out so we have things at the top. And I'll show you I am, in fact, in that Rust directory. I made mine in the home users directory. What I'll first do is type in cargo. And I'll do a space, type in new, another space. I'm going to call this project number one. You can call it whatever you want. Perhaps you already have a project that you want to create and you know the name. I'm going to press enter. And what you'll notice is if you don't have cargo, you have to install it first. It no longer comes with the Rust C package. So I'm going to copy this right here, paste it in and we'll install Cargo really quick. Here we go. Just press yes after your ass, whether or not you want to install it. And now we can use it again. So what to do, do Cargo, space new, project one, whatever name you want. And look at that, created a binary application called project one, it's a package. So LS, notice it created a new folder for us as well. And this is the root directory for our new project. So all of our sources and libraries or packages will belong inside of it. I'm changing directories over to project one, and then I'm gonna do ls to kind of explain some things. You'll notice there's a cargo.toml file and a source folder. So all my source files will exist in this source directory. The cargo.toml file will keep track of various different packages and crates or modules that belong to this specific project. We can open up that file just to check it out. I'm going to type in nano space, and you can use whatever text editor you want to, to open this up. And here it says the project name, the version, edition, and then any dependencies that we'll be having down below. Okay, I'm going to exit out of here. Nothing to be saved. I'm gonna do ls and, and then go over to the source directory. In here, what we have is main rs. Let's open up main rs with our favorite text editor, just to check out what's inside. And look at that, it's very much the same as what we did last time. It already created a function for us. And since main is a function that's required here. It already has a pre-built skeleton for us with a print line, meaning it's gonna display something to the console. And what is it gonna display? It's going to display this text right here that I have highlighted, hello world. So exiting out of this file, let's run it. Now, what I'll do in order to run this project and compile it, I can do it now by typing in cargo space run. And look at that. So it says project one should have had a snake case name. That's my bad. I should have just lowercase the P, no big deal. We can create another one if we want to. Anyways, things finished up and it took about 0.27 seconds to compile things. And what you'll notice at the very bottom is hello world spelled out to us. So after things get compiled, it does run the program for us right after that. That's what cargo space run does. This is of course the debug release file. If we wanted a released version, we'll have to do something else. So what happened in the folder? Well, you can see nothing changed here, but we can go up a directory and notice we now have a target folder that created our binary file with debug headers. So if I go into target, let's just check out what's in there. Another debug folder. So I'm going to type that. And notice there's a whole bunch here, including the project binary file. So if I run this as well, since it's a binary file, I can run it by doing dot slash project one. And notice I get hello world written out to me. So you can see how powerful cargo is and can help you create a brand new structure for your project in what Rust refers to as a crate. Of course, there's a bunch of different commands you can run with Cargo. I use Cargo with Rust. It's a very powerful tool. If I go back a few directories here in the project, if you just do Cargo space clean, that'll clean out your entire project. If you wanna build an app release, you can do Cargo space build. And when you do Cargo build, that actually creates a dev project with unoptimized and debug info attached to your project. You can also build things for release if you want. I'm gonna cargo clean one more time and do cargo build. 
and this time dash dash release. This will actually build an optimized released version of your project. That way it's as optimized as you have it set up to be. You can actually specify what level of optimization you want in the cargo.toml file. That's a little bit much for now. Using the basic optimizations is fine, at least as a beginner and starting out here with using cargo. Now you know how to build, create, and manage your project with cargo. In the future, I want to talk about how to actually use cargo to install crates or modules. That's a whole separate lesson that I want to get into. Make sure to subscribe below to see that video in the future. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.